pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So if we could remain standing, it's been, I think, three weeks. Uh, and we've had some local folks uh, leave. So we have Mrs. Basie, uh, Mr. Hoffman, I remember him well from across the street, Carolyn Hunter, young lady, Barbara Savoy, Gladys Cavetti, Terry Marcano, Virginia Donnelly, and Helen Grunsky. If we could just remember them. And of course, our men and women in the service. Thank you. Yeah, the other one had passed. Yeah, good guys. Good guys. Yeah. So, I don't really do birthday announcements, um, but there is one I do want to do tonight. Actually, there's two that I want to do tonight. So, let me do my little thing over here. I went all out. Now, I have to tell you, for me, it seems like six months ago. So I don't know if the Mr. Howard over here has two a year. But I know he just had one. It seems like about six months ago I was doing this. How does it feel to you? It's normal procedure every year you get older. So we're going to give this to you with a wish. And at the same time, this goes to Mr. Bob Scott, who I call Colonel. You all know Bob Scott, Korean War, uh, two Purple Hearts, and he turned 91 today. So we'll sing happy birthday to Bob Scott, and uh, again to Mr. Howard. We are, one, one song. We're not singing twice. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Brian, happy birthday to you. That sounded terrible. It really did. We need a pitch pipe. Oh my God. That's 130 grams of sugar right there. I'll be the diabetic on there. I can take it off your hands. All right. Uh, public comment on agenda items or other. Yes, sir. Very quickly for three minutes. Uh, five years ago, we got a opportunity because West Point was going to privatize its utilities to have a shot in trying to do something that would benefit the community. We knew it was going to be gone forever. We didn't participate. We formed the High Point Utility. Uh, we now, they tried to build John, a waste John, 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 John. Yeah. Turn around and face oh, us, please. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's no, right. Right. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's There's uh, an opportunity now. We've got to move pretty quickly because the estimate in behind the gate was very high. And if we combine our, our, our efforts with the uh, United Water, which is the largest one in the Hudson Valley and most likely to win, we can reduce our own cost and we can also uh, get a new sewer plant and maybe get some land back to go with it. Thank you, John. Anyone else? Yes. John, I have to give you a compliment right now. I've never seen you speak uh, um, that short of a time. <laughs> Charlie, thank you. <laughs> Am I allowed to? Oh, yeah. I'm vertically challenged. I don't think so. You're all right. I'm short. Um, 
next Tuesday we go live with the banners. Um, anybody who wants to, please get your order in early. We are not reserving spots, first come, first serve. People out there who are thinking maybe they don't have somebody to do a banner for, go back and look. Um, of course, that's a good point. This, I mean, I knew I had a Revolutionary War family member. And I got the information, I decided to Google, and this came up, and if you look down on the second page and it says, um, known patriot participate, participants, and go down the list, and there is my relative, John Parker. So the really, reality is, you don't know who you know who's out there. And how cool is that banner gonna look? So everybody, takes a few minutes, do a little Google search. And I will tell you that uh, there's American Revolution men uh, uh, that fought in the battle of Fort Montgomery buried at a Highland Union Cemetery. And of course, the famous Molly Corbin, who was a woman, of course, uh, West Point thought was buried on West Point. And it turned out they dug someone up that was a six-foot man. So Molly's still with us. So we do have American Revolution uh, patriots right here. Well, that's good to remember. If we get any corporate sponsors, maybe we can yeah. have some banners. Do you want this back? Yeah. Um, so people, please get out there, look, and get your orders in early. Thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, good evening. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, my apologies for not being able to face the camera. There's been a change in the rules or, or public Correct. comments. Correct. Uh, so You're here I, to address the board. Yes, thank you. Okay. So uh, any public comments and an opportunity to have interaction with the board, I would like to invite you all to our next uh, community forum. It's going to be on the 16th of January at the, at the center, 6.30 p.m., uh, an opportunity to engage in good dialogue back and forth rather than in one direction. Notice there's nothing on the agenda for tonight except the approval of a professional engineer to look at uh, some things associated with the wastewater treatment plant. So uh, there were a lot of questions that were asked and comments that were made at the uh, December Village Board meeting about lack of uh, oversight about who was responsible for uh, approving the work at the wastewater treatment plant number of different things, uh, so rather than rehash that, very anxious, and I know there's a lot in the community, they're very anxious to hear from the board in terms of where things are, not only with the repair of the damage at the wastewater treatment plant, how the village is going to be made whole, what the insurance company is saying, who was responsible for making the decision to contract with the contractor when there was no contract in place, no firm price for the work, so uh, very anxious to hear about that, and if that can't be covered tonight, I know there's a lot of residents that are interested in hearing about it on the 16th of January, so thank you very much. A number of things that you just uh, said are inaccurate, some are questions that are legitimate questions, but some things are inaccurate, and you said there's something on the agenda tonight? Oh, to put the specs together, yeah, okay, well that answers one of your questions right there. Okay, anyone else? Okay, we'll do our meeting now. Thank you so much. Um, may I have approval for the minutes that you have in, had in your box down there, a regular meeting on December the 3rd, 2018, and then we had a regular meeting on December the 17th, 2018. Okay, motion. motion by Merv. Is there a second? Second. Second by Charlie. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I'm Steve okay. from the 3rd. Well, let's do them individually. Uh, could I have a motion for the meeting on the 3rd of December? And so moved. Charlie, is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone Same. opposed? One abstention. You have it, Jan? Yes. May I have a motion to accept the minutes on December the 17th, 2018? I made a motion. Motion by Merv. Is there a second? Second. By Jim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Next, we have a correction from the 
meeting on November the 5th. Um, we, uh, we need the motion, we need the uh, minutes to reflect uh, executing an easement to repair village drainage. So if I could have a motion that the minutes reflect that, it would be good. I mean, it, it would be correct. Motion by Merv, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Brian. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have a couple of uh, holidays coming up. Martin Luther King, which is on Monday, January 21. I would like to move our meeting to Tuesday, January 22 at this 7 p.m. And then we have a meeting on Monday, February 18th, President's Day or President's Weekend. I'd like to move that meeting to Tuesday, February 19th. So these two meetings would just be one day ahead. Could I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Charlie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next, uh, reorg is the, the fire department had their annual elections. Uh, and uh, I would like the board, I would uh, suggest that the board approve the, the vote from the members of Eric Smith as its chief of the Holland Falls Fire Department. The assistant chief is Steve Suarez and the deputy chief, Jer Jerry Galoo. Could we have a motion to accept those motion elections? Motion to recognize the uh, fire chief and assistant chief. Second. Motion by Charlie, seconded by Jim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have a resolution introducing local law to amend the zoning law to increase the expiration time period applied to special use permit approvals and provide for public hearing. So tonight, all we're doing is introducing, and then I would ask as a motion uh, that we set the public hearing for February the 4th, 2019. I'll make a motion. You, uh, let me just do it. You have, you have the resolution before you. If you could take a moment to read it. And then you, 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 have the board, you have the resolution before you and you have the local law that'll have a public hearing on the 4th of February. Jim, you want to give us a, a 30 second, I don't mean to put time for I mean, but uh, you know, a little a short thing. There you go. Uh, what this is about, what we have now, and what it might be. Um, in a quick nutshell, right now the uh, town has revised their extensions for special uses um, to two years, and the village previously or right now has it at uh, 90 days extensions. Um, and I guess what the planning board is asking is that we try to make them similar, if not exactly the same, which would make it easier for the consolidated planning board. Good, good. The more of that we do, the more we end up putting the books together. Elise? I know that Trustee Ramos has expressed some concern about the length, the two years. So, um, uh, would it uh, would the board direct me to review that with Trustee Ramos and um, offer suggestions for an amendment on the February fourth meeting? Yes, uh, we would. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right. Okay. Sure. Brian, you all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. So, uh, if I could have a motion that we. Uh, Set a public hearing for the 4th of February 2019. We voted? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do a roll call vote. Roll call? I even have a second. Sure. Yeah, uh, Merv and, and Jim Ramis. Roll call? Trustee Allard? Aye. Trustee Lindsay? Aye. Trustee Ramis? Aye. Trustee Murphy? Aye. Mayor Dinofio? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Next on the agenda is authorizing the mayor to execute necessary agreements and reimbursements requests for state aid from the New York State Department of Transportation in connection with $190,000 in program funding for a project for paving West Street and Main Street sidewalks. 
So this relates to, again, another grant of $190,000, which I, in particular, and the board is very proud of. Uh, this grant money keeps coming in. Uh, it comes from hard work, from start to finish, and finish is when we're done with the job, so we're only halfway through. So we have a, we'll have $190,000 if you're authorized me to sign, and this will go to paving West Street, if you look at it, it's pretty bad, and sidewalks at, uh, at this point, probably this end, of, south end of Main Street. I call out here south end, so it'll be for some sidewalk repair out here. If I could have a motion to uh, sign and execute the agreement. So moved. Thank you, Charlie. Second. Second. Thank you, Brian. All in favor? Aye. Roll call. Roll call you want? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Gina. Roll call. Trustee Alward? Aye. Trustee Livesey? Aye. Trustee Ramis? Aye. Trustee Murphy? Aye. Mayor Dinocchio? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Joe, going yes. along with that, um, James Goofus, while he was in the assembly before he moved over to Senator, uh, we were on the phone, and he's looking at a hundred thousand dollar grant for us to pave several roads in the village. So we'll keep you abreast of what's going on. And Brian, I thank you for that because we talked a couple of times about that, and uh, I think one time I was in the room and we were on the phone and trying to make this happen, which I'm sure it will. So uh, let us know how it goes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, resolution resolution for general the general village elections whereas the next village election for offices will be held on the 19th of March 2019 and whereas no person shall be entitled to vote at any village election whose do, whose name does not appear on the register of the election district in which he or she claims to be entitled to vote and now therefore be it resolved that the voting for the upcoming General village election shall be conducted at Sacred Heart School Gym, 7 Cousins Avenue, until 9, from no, uh, excuse me, from noon, on March 19th, noon to 9 p.m. Be it further resolved that this resolution shall take place immediately, dated today. The polls, uh, the polls going back to Sacred Heart? We're going back to Sacred Heart because it was, uh, uh, it was good for people to be able to park. And not and let and tremendous no no chaos it, it, it worked, and so uh, I went and, and visited Father Joe and um, he consented with an agreement. So if I could uh, have roll call. Motion. I get. I make a motion. I'll second. Roll call, Trustee Alward. No. I'm sorry. Aye. Aye. Trustee Livesey? Aye. Trustee Ramis? Aye. Trustee Murphy? Aye. Mayor Dinarfi? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Okay, some more good news. Uh, well, let's see. This is the PESH training. Well, training is always good. So the following item is customarily done at the beginning of the calendar year. One, a motion to approve that all village employees who are required to attend public employee safety and health PESH training seminars are authorized to do so in the calendar year 2019. If I could have a motion. So moved. Motion by Charlie. Is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, another grant. We love grants. So, this is from the IDA, the Industrial Development Agency. They're based out of uh, Stewart Field. Uh, for this grant, I did paperwork and three interviews. And uh, I applied for dollars that could go to our engineer to offset any direct village taxpayers money being used for engineering towards the Restore New York which is the taking of paint off of several buildings on Main Street. Um, that was a holding, uh, putting us on hold to come up with this amount of money for engineering. Um, but now with a $45,000 grant from the IDA uh, to pay the uh, pay the engineer for this, again, this paint removal, for which we'll do one building at a time. 
Um, we have. So this is very, very good because I'm not sure what would have happened if we didn't get this amount of money. Now, um, I do, um, I have just gotten, I have just started to get familiar with the IDA. Um, and I have a lot of literature downstairs that I took from the different meetings I had at Stewart at the IDA's office of what they do. Uh, I know it says IDA, but they do a lot of EC, uh, econo or ED, economic development. That's what they do. And that's what this grant is all about, to take paint off some of these buildings. And uh, without uh, Jim DeSavo uh, being a member of the IDA, to be honest with you, I would not have known about this. So, Jim, I see you in the back. And uh, I just want to thank you, because it truly is the only way this is going to move forward now is with this particular grant. To get the grant itself, $500,000, a half a million dollars, that was great by those who did it. But they required, uh, us, you couldn't take engineering out of the grant money. So that would have been direct payment from village taxpayers. So with your help, um, I know what goes into these. Um, I, the board, I and the board want to thank you. No worries. So thank you. Um, I need a motion uh, to uh, be authorized to sign the paperwork um, for this grant for engineering. May I have it? I'll make a motion. Motion by Merv. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Jim. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Need authorization to sign the necessary paperwork to obtain a chemical application permit or permits for Row Park Pond. It's an annual, it's, we do this every year. So if you could let me have authorization to sign, I will do so and we can uh, get ready to uh, make that pond over there cleaner. Motion. motion by Merv. Is there a second? Second. Do I need roll call? No. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you so much. Transfer of funds. Uh, the treasurer is asking for $20,000 from the A1990.1990 .1990 to A8140.1990 A storm drain motion to make the transfer is there a second 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 by brian roll call no. all in favor aye. aye opposed motion carried another transfer uh the uh treasurer has, is asking for is to authorize the transfer of $30,000 from uh, A A3120.0100 to general fund A3120.0120. May I have a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. The money was already in there. It's a simple Yeah. Transfer. Yes, sir. Uh, Jim and Brian, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, I have an appointment to the consolidated... Zoning Board of Appeals of Joseph Murphy. His term will expire on December the 31, 2023. May I have a motion to approve that appointment? I'll make a motion. Motion by Merv. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Charlie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I have another appointment to the Consolidated Planning Board. Uh, of Matthew Johnson. His term expired and he wishes to be to remain. And he's a, 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 a he's an asset to that he's board. He's an asset to that board. Thank you, Jim. He's a good man. Thank you, Jim. And Merv. His term will expire on December the thirty first on uh, the year twenty twenty three. Motion. Isn't there a song twenty twenty three? Who said that? Oh, 25-25. Uh, 
Set the song. Do you need the second? I don't know anymore, Charlie. <laughs> we have a second. Charlie, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have uh, to authorize. I'd like uh, tonight to uh, uh, we authorize Todd Atkinson, our our engineer, to put the specs together for the repairs to the uh, wastewater treatment plant. I will make that motion. Thank you, Murph. Is there I'll a second? Brian seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you so much. I have bills and claims in the amount of for eight year eighteen two thousand nineteen one hundred sixty seven thousand two hundred forty two dollars and ninety six cents. Motion to pay all bills. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, I'm going to make some comments and then I'll give it over to the board. The fence over at Roll Park that was damaged uh, by a car. Um, are we still looking at the tapes? Or is that, are we still looking at the tapes? Still looking at the taste, but we're going to go forward and repair it. So we'll make sure we take pictures, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and sidewalk repairs in particular, but not only, but in particular on Main Street, uh, you'll see uh, certain sections being done um, by the village crew, uh, which is um, some knowledge they have in doing this of, uh, you know, forming up and, and laying concrete. So you'll see different sections out there. They're being done by the village crew, and we'll continue to do it as as uh, as we can. Uh, and very happy to report again tonight uh, of another grant um, uh, that we were probably going to lose. <coughs> which was uh, many years ago we had received a grant to do streets, in particular Mearns Avenue, Oak Avenue, and Barry Hill. Uh, Barry Hill was done and there was some money left. And um, and there was $60,000 left that I tried to get reappropriated to Mearns Avenue, but uh, when I got back into office, but uh, uh, before I got back, uh, that money was lost, and it actually went to Port Jervis. So my next thing was to get on the state um, about uh, repurposing money that was not spent on oak. We fixed oak, but we didn't spend all the money, and it was $107,987, so just shy of $108,000. So through a process of meetings downstairs, several, uh, several meetings out at the county, at the Orange County Transportation Committee, uh, and with DOT, which is a government into itself, um, I was able to get this just shy of $108,000 reappropriated so we don't lose it over to Mearns Avenue. So we will have somewhere shy of $340,000 to help defray the cost of Mearns Avenue. Uh, there was, um, I'll call it disbelief instead of anything else. Uh, but if anyone's interested, this is a copy of a check for $497,500, just shy of a half a million dollars that we received from the insurance company for the fire at the wastewater treatment plant. I understand some folks didn't believe it, which is too bad, but there's a copy of the check. Sewer bills went out, and in your sewer bill was a letter uh, um, about uh, winter and snow and parking your car so I'm sure it was in your uh, I'm sure it was in with your sewer bill just 190 um, the meetings that we had downstairs uh, with Central Hudson uh, proved beneficial for the village because we uh, stood our ground but you'll see Mountain Avenue was uh, repaved uh, as a temporary but uh, much better than the temporary patch they had done. So at least now you can, 
you can drive on it, you can feel safe, you don't have to cross over because of a bump. Um, the squeaky wheel got, uh, got what they were supposed to get, what they should get. And also the sidewalk over here at the library, they did a, I will say Central Hudson's contractor did a really nice job. I have a letter going out to, well, I'm actually going to hand deliver it to each business. That'll be here for anyone that wants to see it after I hand it out. School attorney, school attorney, I don't need that, I don't need that. Um, I want to commend the uh, center for hosting this uh, Town of Highlands Community Coalition uh, uh, Committee. Um, the mission is to educate residents, promote prevention, treatment, and recovery, reduce the number of overdoses, and address all concerns surrounding alcohol and substance abuse. Um, I go to as many meetings of theirs as, that I can. I was there last week. Uh, Mr. Howard was there, a few other folks, and uh, they're doing just great work. Um, they come, they have an agenda, they leave, they have it once a month, they come back with a their to-do list completed. I have some things I'm going to do before the next meeting. And uh, this is just such a, this is a very, very uh, good uh, committee. Right. Thanks. Okay, last thing I want to bring up, and then I'll turn it over to the board, is a uh, vendor spot. So, um, I see we have some folks here around the corner, maybe. Correct? Okay. May I ask you, is that a temporary spot down here? Uh, it can be temporary or permanent. Oh, you, no, no, I'm talking about where you are. Presently? Yeah. Only weekends. Okay. So, um, I was wondering if the board could approve a second spot. Uh, we would have to designate the spot. I do have some aerial uh, pictures here of where I think a good spot would be. Uh, uh, we'd have to do it by resolution, not tonight, but maybe at the, maybe at the next meeting. Certain dates and the requirements. The same as the one spot that we have now. I don't think it would differ from that. Uh, but we'd have to put some dates in there. Um, so I'll throw that out to the board so that we can do this or um, not. My recommendation is that we do it. Um, well, I don't know. You didn't have any. Did you have any input from the chamber? What's that? Did, I'm sorry, John. Did you have any input from the chamber? Regarding the vendor spot. Uh, yeah, actually, you want me to get up and talk, or? No, you can give it to us. Just here? Yeah, we, uh, prior to Christmas weekend, uh, we've been away since then, in the holidays, but prior to Christmas weekend, surveyed 28 businesses here in Highland Falls, uh, and just asked the general question about having the, uh, uh, the mobile truck, the vendor truck, uh, and what it was going to be doing. Of the 28 businesses, 24 were supportive of it, three were not supportive of it, and one was maybe needed to think about it. Can you break that down into food establishments? Uh, yeah, uh, in terms of number of food, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine, it looks like. So out of that, how many said no or yes? Or? Of the food, uh, it was a breakdown of, and one of them was the maybe. Okay, so one, one of the food ones was a maybe. Uh, but other than that, it was uh, three, four yeses and two noes. Okay. 
So um, there you have that survey. Now, um, if, if I could add one more comment on, on behalf of them. In general, the comment was made too about the food truck. Not all of them said this, but a lot of them said it. Not all uh, about uh, a diversity in the food offering would be welcome. A food truck that is serving some of the same types of things that we typically can find here in the community currently, not sure necessarily of what added value that might be. Well, you have something different anyway, I think. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, so board, what what is your... Uh, well, I, I'd like to just say, and I don't want to make this long, but, you know, I have a food truck, and I've heard a lot of conversation out there, well, Mr. Lipsy's against this because he has a food truck. Absolutely, positively false statements. <laughs> My business is 9W... 99% is probably New York City people. That's what I get. I don't get much from Howell Falls, if anything. Okay? Set that for the record. When we first spoke about a food truck up in Highland Falls, this is what I wanted to hear first. A little survey of the community, what's going on, who's for it, who is it, and everything. That's why at first, I was not for a food truck. Okay? I didn't know how the businesses were going to feel, whether food or whatever, they are a business on Main Street. That's the way you look at it. Since the time of the first food truck that was put out into the parking lot, um, I got a little backlash on that. How come you were against it? How come you were against it? How come you were against it? Um, nobody really said to me, geez, Merv, you know, now we're, we're talking about another food truck to be into the parking lot. And... Mr. Modlin did a survey now. Survey seems like no problem to me. Um, I, for one, now have no problem of this, of having a food truck in a, in a parking lot. The mayor went through, and there's a designated spot that we looked into now of, of having this food truck put in there. We have the attorney in which we spoke to the attorney about putting something together where it would be into writing with the village of the spots that we have, which I've mentioned this before, this is the way we should do it. You can't just throw out of a, out of a hat one spot, two spots, who knows how many spots. I like your truck, but I don't like your truck. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two spots. Those spots will go through a contract with the village. Correct me if bidding. I'm wrong. Bid, a bidding. A bidding, excuse Seal me, a bidding. Bidding. I, I, I like that. That's okay. Anyway, through a bidding, okay? Periodically, those two bids, because there's going to be two spots, will end yearly. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. So now, this is going to be in writing, which this is what I wanted to see at first, okay? There's not going to be three spots. There's not going to be four spots or anything else like that. There's going to be two spots. And when the first spot, the bidding will re-up at the end of the year, this new spot that's going in, the bidding will read up at the end of the year. So if somebody out there decides, hey, you know what? I want to have my spot up there. Well, you're going to go against whoever is there right now and let the bidding start for that spot. And that's the way we're going to have it, and it's going to be set in stone on two spots. I, I personally, as a village trustee, represent the village of Holland Falls. This I do not have a problem with doing it this way. Again, I had a problem before because nothing was clarified. This will be clarified, it will be documented, it will be in writing. I clarified it. Thank you. Okay? That's me. Any other comments on the board? Okay. So let's, we have, the, in order for this to happen now, we have to um, have a motion um, to create a second spot. Don't we have to... Do a law change because yeah, it's part of the law change. Yeah. The code. we have to designate a law. Uh, we have to designate a spot that'll go into the lo new local law to create a second spot. And then, Merv, um, it was unclear to me. We currently have a contract based on the current law for one spot. Right. Are you saying that we should? back away from that I think, contract? I think, I think what we should do, because we, were, we weren't really notifying the community exactly what we had, but I think we should just do, you know, this is my opinion, Charlie, 
we'll put two spots out there. Everybody here, two spots. That's what we're going to have. Um, you want you you want interest in that spot? Come at the end, then come bid. Well, the only thing I want to throw out there, unless there's a legal way to get around it, the current spot is up in July. So we don't want to wait till July for the second spot to kick in. So unless we can do something about that legally, they're going to stagger. Well, the contract is up in July. So the they will stagger unless you make the new one um, effective. Um, the same date. The same date. No, I, 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 I don't. I'm saying so July and the new one. First, we have to change the local law. Right. To allow a second spot. Yeah. Now, I would suggest that the board please consider this and let me know how you want to do this. I would suggest modifying the law so that the number of spots timing of the spots and the location of the spots be set by resolution so that every time you want to add or maybe take one out you don't have to change the local law. So that would be my suggestion and you tell me if you want to do that, think about it. Second thing is I'll look at what the local law now says about timing and I'll think about how you might be able, the idea is we want to go out all at once you can do that, or you could stagger it, especially if maybe you want a little, you don't want just all new vendors at the same time versus kind of a carry. -in. I don't have problems with that. Yeah, so, so let me know. If you don't want them staggered, I'll figure out a way to do that. If yeah. you don't care about that. I, I, uh, I think they're going to need, because of the nature that we have on paper right now, they're, with the one vendor, we, we're going to need to... Uh, we're going to need you to could, you you could award the next contract for a longer period, or, or actually, for a shorter period for the or first year. Well, I'm not sure what kind of response you would get from vendors if it's only a four or five month contract because Unless it's, it's the summer. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. But, yeah. but, but the point July is, too, is, this is not. Let's don't summer. let's yeah. don't yeah. make yeah. this a big yeah. deal. Yeah. This is yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys think about it. Tell right. me what you want, right. and I'll modify the law to so, that. So, so something will be done, and then when we got when it goes out to bid, it's up to you from that point on. Can we possibly have this ready by the next meeting? If you let me know what you want, okay. yes. Okay. Now, of course, it'll require uh, public hearing and all. Yeah, of that. no, we gotta go through the through that. Yeah. Okay, Brian. The gentleman that we hired, Todd Ackerson, is an excellent engineer. He's been with us before. Uh, he is responsible for doing the specs, the treatment, mortar facility, treatment sewer facility, and. It's going to take a while for those plans to go in, and then the insurance company has to approve it. No one on this board can tell you it's going to be a month or two months or three months. But nothing can be done until those plans are approved by our insurance company. So it may be a while until the specs go in. If they need to be changed, we'll send them back, and our engineer will have to change them. All right? So hey, Brian, let me just add to that, to your comments, and I appreciate you saying that. Uh, um, this is all being done by our insurance carrier, our insurance company. So we have to follow them. And I will tell you, so far, without a doubt, without a doubt, uh, they have been uh, working with the village to um, make all these repairs. And, and uh, there's been many site visits uh, by them. And, and uh, meetings downstairs and many meetings on the phone um, and everything and, and advancing us a half a million dollars um, uh, is, is very, very good. So I'm very happy as to this date with our insurance carrier. Anything else? Yeah, the meeting that we had at the center regarding drug and alcohol abuse, one of the things we're trying to do is get into the middle school and sort of working with young people up there because the D.A.R.E. program only goes so far. 
The other issue is it's 2019, and I'd like to announce that addiction is a medical issue. People do not wake up in the middle of the night saying, God, I can't wait till I become addicted. That's not how it works. It's a medical issue, and people need to be treated with dignity because it is a medical issue. So we're looking at maybe Al-Anon. We're looking at counselors to come in. We have kids in this village that live in some pretty tough places. Parents are doing alcohol, there's drugs in the family, and that's what we're trying to do. But I think we need to stop looking at it as, well, you know, it was their choice to, to try it. Yes, it was. But it's certainly not their choice to become addicted. That's a medical issue. And there's a wonderful book out there called A Dope Sickness. And it shows how all this medication was given to kids, young adults, from Purdue Pharmacy, opioids. And there was a big debate saying, is it really addictive? And it was told, no, it's not addictive at all. But it is. So that's what the center is trying to do. So I would like us to look at addiction as an illness. Thank you. Thank you. Mer? Um, I have a couple things, and I do probably expect the board to chime in on these things a little bit, especially Charlie over there. So I have some concerns, and the reason I have these concerns, I'm going to start with some of the commercial properties that we have here, and we've spoken about this a few times already, and we know the buildings that are there, and um, one of them is the old Nicole's. Okay, I think really as, as us, as a community, we, know, we, we really need to know what's happening with these properties, because right now I haven't seen anybody at some of these properties. I don't know what's happening with the buildings. I know this is like the harsh winter we're going into right now. So from what I understand from some of these buildings, they're frozen up and everything else. So I don't know what's going to happen with these buildings. What is the future of these buildings? But I do know that when you drive into this community, it is becoming an eyesore, some of these. So I, I think we really during the winter time, we should go after and find out exactly from the owners what what is their future here, what's happening with the building. I can I can and partially address Nicole's. And the other thing is some of the residential homes. I mean, okay, so we're out of the property maintenance because grass isn't growing right now, so we're sort of brushed them off a little bit. But some of these residential homes that are out there, the staggered looking homes that we we see. Um, what's happening with them? So I think we should really knock on a landlord's door on these things and say to them what's happening. Well, the building department should. Well, I, again, as, as, as us, though, as, as representing the village, we should then be pushing somebody to be able to say, let's not wait till springtime, and then all of a sudden, here's all of these properties that we have again. The, the other thing that I noticed, and, you know, we know that the old guard is planning... I'm putting a hotel. If you go by Brooks's, or excuse me, by Rowe Park, and you stand by home plate on a big field, and you look up by Mr. Feldman's house, that area up there, which is very, very visible right now because there's no greenery up there, is going to be the back side of whatever they built. That's what you're going to see, and it's going to be huge. So for all of the residents that are living in that area, I have a concern of what is this going to look like, the back side? Is it going to look like, the, like you know, what is it going to look like? And I have to tell you, I, I've taken pictures, I forgot them, but I've taken pictures of this. And when you walk around Rowe Park, which I have to tell you, to me, I think I get personal with Rowe Park because I love it up there. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful park that's set in, in the village here. And when you, when you look at this and you say to yourself, wow, wonder what that's going to look like up there. We, the village people, we have no idea what's even going on up there except for the Jersey Bears, a big pile of dirt, and I looked back on the YouTube, they're supposed to be building right now. Which, did you see the, they did I see, I, see, I see what they're doing up there, but, you know, there's a big difference of preparing and there's a big difference of oh. building. Mer, look, 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 look. Uh, you have, those are legitimate questions, but let me just say a couple of things. Mm -hmm. You know that I'm preparing a meeting yeah. where you could address these yeah. instead of always, so that you can address them. That's number one. Number two, 
you have, mm -hmm. you have renderings of what the back is going to look like. I know. They've given. Well, you say you don't know. Well, we don't know if that's what it's going to look like, Joe. That's what's been approved. That's what's I, been approved. I know that's what's been approved, but is that actually what's going to be up there? Well, let, let's 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 look at this way. You know, when I was on the town board, we were talking about the Old Guard Hotel. I'm sitting here now, seven years later, and I'm talking about the Old Guard Hotel. You know, I, I'm sorry, folks, that I keep bringing this up. But I get nervous about vacant property like that. I get nervous about when there's something like that that's sitting up there. Rumors flow, okay? That that piece of property is it going to happen or is it not going to happen? Uh, uh, Merv, again, uh, uh, you 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 can. I'm sorry. No 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 no. Please, please. I'm not telling you no. Just don't do that. Again, these are. Legitimate questions from you, and again, um, you know I'm arranging a meeting for all the parties to be in the room together okay. to ask all of these questions. Um, I really, I really think that should be a public meeting. I do. Yes, sure. I, I, I really think it should be, Mayor. I think, I think the public should be here, and the reason why is because I think the public concern is actually out there, and I know that there's support on this. I know there's support on having an old guard hotel up there. But I also know that there's support on, wait a minute, what is actually going to happen up there? Okay. You brought up Nicole's. I can only tell you that uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints has purchased it, and it's on the tax rolls under their name out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I can't tell you any more than that, but I can tell you that. Uh, I'm interested in what their intent is, mm -hmm. um, and we'll see. I know you'll know, or when you know, you tell me. Okay. What was the name? Latter-day Saints. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But that, that's a concern of mine. It is a concern, and I keep bringing it up at these meetings here, and I hope one meeting I don't look and say, I told you so. I hope that doesn't happen. Rich, I'm glad you're here because I have a question for you. The other thing I want to talk about is the water that comes down the brook. It seems like an enormous amount of water lately that's been coming down that brook. Even from, a, you know, we're talking about rain, you know, coming down. But that seems to be an awful lot of water coming down that brook. What, is what, there, wait a minute, what brook? The plants Island? aren't drinking anymore. It's all running off now. The plants aren't drinking it, so it's all coming down the water. In the, in the springtime, they're drinking, so it's... No, I, I understand yeah. that, but it what just bro? seems like what? Island Brook? Yeah. Well, oh, oh, it's been doing... It for It's rained for a month. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, yeah. Joe, I've been there for 20 years. I know what rain is and what a storm is. And this here, actually, the last storm that we had was probably two feet from coming over somebody's wall. And that's from rainstorm. That's not a storm. So God forbid there's a storm, so I'm just wondering, is there something else that maybe opened up? Is there something else that's maybe possibly flowing into it? It's the same I, 15 acres of drainage. Oh. 50, 15 square miles. Who are you sure. asking this question to? I'm <laughs> these two right here. All and Rich. So, like, I don't have a direct answer except to say, last year was the most rain in the calendar year in the history of North right. East America. That's my answer. Yeah. I hiked into Glycerin Hollow recently. You probably saw that post on I Facebook. I did. I did. It's flooded up there too. Everything is saturated. Yeah. And yeah. just flooded. But, but, so, but, but I don't think we should downplay the amount of rain we be getting. Not only has it rained almost every day, but it's when it's raining, it's actually downpouring. It's not going. I never had puddles. I mean, large, almost you could call them ponds in my yard. It can't go down. Joe, I, I get I get that. So if you, uh, but but the thing is that I'm, I'm I'm talking about is right now, this is rain, okay? This is rain that we're getting. If we were to get a storm that came in, like a serious storm, like we did last time, I don't know what's going to happen. I I went down by Wyant down here, and uh, Cat, I remember the water that you had down there. That was a lot of water down there for a rain. I don't know if there's something we could do about that. I don't know if there's something in the world of drainage that's up there. And Joe, 
I know how much you want to do. Well, I got to tell you this: there's a lot of homes that are along that walk, that that part of that brook there, and I don't want to sit here and say, "Well, there's just a lot of rain." To no, Mer, let me tell you something. No, I, no, 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 no. You, no you're, 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 let me let me just, uh, say something to you. I lived as mayor through three floods, right. not rain. I'm talking about flood. Right. Meaning flood means to me in that particular area, right. the water came over the top of the stone wall. Right. Okay, three of them. Yep. Okay, so I know all I know. Right. I know that area up there. Right. So that's why and, I'm and, and saying... And I need the people to also understand that the village doesn't own the walls. I understand that. Okay. But I am saying that where that water is running down from, we need to take a look at that because, again, during that rainstorm, some of those homes that were there, it was only two feet from going over. No, it's not okay, Joe. Okay, I well, I, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm, I, I hear you. Well, I'll send the water department out tomorrow. But what's your recommendation? I, 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 I am going to go with the water department. Oh, okay. Then you, you're going to take right. care of this. Right. Okay. Yes, um, because. Uh, if I could interject, we, we do talk about, um, you know, dams and reservoirs in the, the emergency management planning group, um, which you're welcome to attend. Um, the only thing that we could do sort of prophylactically would be to lower the level of the reservoir in advance of a storm. But I, with this much rain, I really don't know if it's I, I know, but we're going, with, we're going back with this much rain again, Charlie. You're not getting the point of what I'm saying. I know how much yeah, rain you want to prepare up. if we get a it's storm not, on It's not just it. preparing. There's, again, there's a lot of homes that are along there. Actually, if you go down by... The, and I call it the middle school, sorry, that's where I went to school, was the middle school. And that little bridge that's down there, and that old brick house that's back there, you go look at his wall. You go, I mean, I don't know if, I don't know if any of the board members have, to, I've taken a walk down that whole brook. You go take a look at some of these walls that are back there, and i got to tell you something, for the last time I'll say it, I realize how much rain has come down, okay? I work on the water. I realize how much rain has come down, but if we get a storm, you are going to have a serious problem with the houses that are along that brook. And what I'm saying is we need to take a look at this, Rich, and I know you have a lot of knowledge of that up there. Maybe there is a way when these storms come to slow it down a little bit. Because as I say, right now, not the rain, but that water flow coming down, it's too much. So there is one thing that should be done. Mm -hmm. Our dam is filled up. Right. It needs to be dredged out. Right. It will then contain a lot more. It'll more contain control. more and bring a slower it's, amount. It's been like years since we've done it. It's like the DEC has to. We, we're trying to get permit. We're trying to get DEC permits to go into the yes. brook to clean it, clean it which right. means take out a majority. I don't know majority. It's take old, out those boulders, the, the, yeah. the silt, and yeah. everything. They're, they're, behind the dam particularly, yeah. they're fragile, those walls. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever looked at them before, but they are fragile walls along that brook there. And that water, when that comes down there, I have to tell you something. If you were to fall in there, you're done. That's how it was at the last storm. You are done. And, John, you live down by there. Yeah. If you fall in, you're done. That's how powerful that, that water is coming down. And some of them old walls that are there, the only point that I'm trying to make is we really, really need to look into this because I see devastation coming along that brook zone. Well, I really do. So, Mark, I think the mayor stated that we as the village don't own the walls, correct? That are along the individual properties. Now, wait, listen, Go hear ahead. me out. And, and you're absolutely right that they're a problem. But there are some programs out there that are tree, listen, trees for tributaries that we need to look into so we can stabilize some of the banks. As far as the walls, we're going to have to look into that too. Jim, but I don't know how we could fix the walls. The, the only thing I can tell you is, uh, is on that point there, and you're talking to somebody that lost a lot. No, no, okay, I have, no, no. But I'm just what, what I'm saying to you though, and I'm not trying to drag on with this. You can call wherever you want, okay, and then make another call after that call, and make another call after that call. Well, the walls are a problem. And you're well, absolutely the, right. The walls are a problem, so what I think is the best solution right now is trying to find something, a method, or whatever it should be, and how can we slow this up a little bit? Well, the, D, the DEC right now, and throughout New York State, they, they're removing dams, so they're not holding water back well, on dams that aren't used anymore. So 
it, there's a, uh, there, there's something that we really need Listen, to look I, into. I can only tell you what I'm saying, and I'm, I tell you what, I'm not going to be wrong on this one. I'm not going to be wrong on this. Trust me when I tell you that, folks. There's yeah. too much water coming down on that brook right now, and it's too powerful. Those walls are too old. People cannot, I mean, Listen, let me tell you something. If the old res breaks, you're absolutely right. Some of, the, some of these people that are, you know, you talk about, well, there's money out there that could, they, they're not going to do that. FEMA's not going to step up on that. FEMA will give you a loan. That's what FEMA will do. But anyway, I made my point well, just, uh, just to correct that, FEMA will, if there's damage done in the past, in the past. In the past. The, yeah. Well, I can only go by, I, I can only go by the past, Merck. Okay. There were, and, and most people don't. Don't remember. There were three floods. When I, I say know. flood, I mean like this. I know. Okay? Not groundwater. Yes. FEMA came in and, and took and helped these folks out. And the last thing I got since I've been what an hour now, something like that. Is this the chief still here? Yes, he sold them. Did you? Yeah. I spoke to the chief a couple of days ago on this one here, and what it was is about some of the speeding. And I spoke about this before, and I spoke about this at meetings before. The speeding has to stop. It has to stop. And if you see a car, call in the police. Call the police department on it. It's too much anymore. And that's it. Now that I vented. Jim. No. Charlie. No. Um, let's see. Well, a reminder that this is a time of year that blood banks are are in need of a transfusion. Uh, to that end, Monday, January 28th, the fire department will be doing a blood drive from 3.30 until 8 at the firehouse on Mountain Avenue. Um, recently, last week, we had a very I thought a very good meeting with the cell tower uh, people, yeah. with the committee, and uh, I think we made some real progress. And another meeting is scheduled for very early in February. And hopefully, we will be able February to get this first. off the time. February first. Thank you, Charlie, for that. Um, and then, lastly, I, I don't. I, I think for many of us, 2018 was a rugged year. Um, but I think um, the village did accomplish a number of good things, and one was uh, this village looked spectacular for the holidays. I'm really sad to see the snowflakes down, but during the holiday season, it looked beautiful. Thank you, John. That's it. Jim? Yeah, and if I could piggyback on that, I was uh, like to always have pictures of uh, properties in the village that look great. Um, that make this a great place to live. And uh, the nighttime pictures just didn't come out. But I would uh, also like to thank uh, all the residents that did put up um, house decorations for Christmas. I mean, uh, it really makes this a uh, uh, nice place to come, not only visit, but live. Uh, so thank you to all the residents on that. Also, uh, this is Radon Awareness Month. Uh, you can go to the EPA's website. Um, should, uh, if you have a concern or you think you have a concern with radon in your house, uh, there's ways to uh, have that uh, checked And because uh, radon is a silent killer. <clears throat> Another thing, um, from the wastewater treatment plant, they gave me a five-year plan on some of the things that they want to do down there, one of the things that we asked for the departments. So they have uh, uh, five different things that they're going to be looking at that I'll share with the mayor. Um, and the residents, I can real quick, uh, they're looking at restoring uh, all of the uh, equipment that has been damaged. We know we're working on the belt press, which is 30 years old and it's not efficient and parts aren't even available for it. Uh, they're looking at doing upgrades to the secondary digester. Um, they're also looking at replacing the uh, RBC units that aren't damaged because those are also 30 years old. And uh, there's, a lift there's a lift elevator that's in the Headworks building. Again, 30 years old. The plant's 30 years old. We definitely got our money out of it. Now we need to put some back in it, and I know we're working on the grants to do that. Um, another thing that was asked of the departments was to reduce some overtime. And uh, one thing that they do down at the wastewater treatment plant, uh, especially during the winter, is uh, odor control and maintenance that they do. 
in the winter months. Uh, they don't need that as much. <clears throat> so, weekends. yeah, uh, and on the weekends. So that gets rid of some of the overtime costs that are down there, um, and they're on top of that. Uh, last but not least, we got some uh, Conservation for Kids magazines downstairs. Uh, stop by, grab some for your kids. If the kids want, they're right at Village Hall, right at the window. You don't even need to ask the ladies behind the desk. They're right there. If they run out, I'll make sure I get more. I was in contact with some DEC officers today. Um, and hopefully down the pike, we're going to have some other things going on in the village uh, concerning uh, getting the kids involved in outdoor activities. That's all I have. Take a motion to adjourn. Excuse me. Yeah. Motion to well, just if, if it's okay with it, a question was asked of me. I never said a word to anything that was asked of me. I just have a few things to add. Uh, so you asked me about the corridor that the water flows through. Well, so everybody, is it okay if I talk? I worked on the Tap NZ Bridge for four years, as everybody knows, as a crane operator. And after that, I've gone to work on the Sawmill Parkway and the Hutchison River both of which are receiving $80 million to elevate them because they flood. The problem that you have is your corridor isn't big enough. The village will never have enough money to solve that problem. You have to go to federal help, however you go about that. And I know there's been talk with what happened a few years ago that I thought was rather well handled when the oil truck flipped over. The village watershed is 700,000 gallons per day. Your plant can handle 800,000 gallons per day. So your plant is built for more than your watershed, which is smart. for 1.2, actually. <clears throat> eight, 800,000 by the numbers I got a few years ago. They about all they can handle now. Your watershed is more than one-third coming out of Glycerin Hollow. If you were to pipe what's coming out of Bog Meadow, you won't have the watershed. That's all I wanted to say. I know that's important, but your watershed is a lot more than Highland Brook and Bog Meadow. It wasn't built okay. for a watershed. It was built for uh, motion, to adjourn. motion to adjourn on the table. Is there a second? I'll second. Second, second by Merv. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming tonight.